Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Earthbound. This will be part 6, and in the last video we managed to save Paula from the Happy Happiest Cult, as well as freeing everyone from the evil clutches of the Money Money statue. So yeah, um, I did mention, like, in part 1, now we get, or is it part 2? I think it was part 2. We get a cool little bit of foreshadowing where we see where the Mani Mani statue actually comes from, which is right next to uh, Ness's house and on it, which is pretty neat. But yeah, um, anywho. So, yeah, now we actually got to see it play a role in the story. It is not done yet, no spoilers intended, but there's still a little bit more to the Mani Mani. But yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and, um, I'm going to go and do the next sanctuary location, which is in this cave over here. Let's talk to this guy. I'm a changed person. I no longer believe in happy happyism. Anyway, I'm very curious about the place that lies ahead of here. It's not very safe for you, we'll say that, because there's monsters, um, literally everywhere. Oh wait, shoot. <laughs> I realized that maybe one thing I should do before I go in there is, um, maybe it'd be a good idea to buy Paula some equipment. Let's see, how much money do I have? Oh, $2,600, okay. Let's take out, like, um... You take out, like, 500 Alright, take your cash. Because, yeah, I'm gonna buy, like, the copper bracelet, and that's, like, 350 or something like that. Oh, sorry, 359 But, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and... Uh, wait, hold on, which one did I pick? I think I accidentally picked the sandlot bat. I meant to get the fry pan. Anyway, who will carry this? Paula will. Alright, 2 to 12, nice. Alright, uh, copper bracelet, and then um, we'll buy the ribbon. We could give her the Holmes hat as well, like she could wear the baseball hats, but um, the ribbon is better for her. It gives better uh, defense. So yeah. Okay, so now the only thing we're missing is a, a charm of some sort. I think we could get one from the area, like, the previous area with the river and all that, but, oh well. Anyway, if we're gonna go ahead and buy some croissants, um, we'll give one to Ness, but then we're gonna give the others to Paula. And I usually like having Paula carry our healing items, and even though Ness, I would say, is like our main healer, because he has life up, I give the items to Paula because, um, she doesn't have life up. So she needs like some way of healing if Ness isn't available, like if Ness somehow dies, which is not very likely because Ness pretty much always has higher defense and HP than Paula, who has the worst HP and defense in the game. But if something were to happen to Ness, we could use um, uh, Paula's uh, uh, healing items to heal, so that's just a you know, way to be prepared, I guess. Anyway. So yeah, we have a uh, teddy bear, so that's good. Um, we should be able to have it absorb some damage, which is nice. Yeah, here we go. We got a mole plane rough. Uh, now, Paula does come with PK Freeze as her base ability, but we're not going to use it yet because we only have 10 PP, and I think... Oh, good, it attacked teddy bear, so that's good. But yeah, I think, what, PK Freeze costs like 6, right? Oh, hold on a sec. No, it costs four. Okay, so we can do it twice, actually. That's good. But yeah, it does a lot of damage to one enemy, but I just need to save my um, my PP for right now. Paul is level three, so good. We got like two level ups right there. PP went up by four. PK fire, nice. Oh, wow. Wow, we got a lot of level ups, actually. Now five. Oh my gosh. There we go, nice. Alright, splendid. So now she went from level 1 to level 5. And look, those are good stats. Now the way Paula levels up, she tends to get a higher IQ more than Vitality. And um, I guess I could go and explain these stats real quick, because I haven't done that yet. Offense and defense is pretty self-explanatory, and offense is how much damage you do with your physical attacks. Defense is how much damage you'll take from physical attacks. PSI attacks are not affected by offense or defense, so don't worry about that. Speed just affects like who goes first in the battle in terms of the order, so high speed to lowest speed. It doesn't always play out like exactly like that. So like sometimes it's possible for um like Paula might go first, even though Ness has like five more speed, although I actually I don't think that would happen. I think the speed needs to be a little bit closer. But it is possible, I think maybe just really rare 
Guts is an interesting stat. Um, the higher it is, the higher chance of getting a smash attack, or a critical hit, whatever you want to call it, but smash, we'll call it smash. And there's another thing, um, an interesting mechanic. Um, when you get a fatal blow, there's a very small chance that you will survive a fatal blow with 1 HP left. So even though, um, like, Ness, for instance, only has a max of, like, 166, if he gets, like, blown up by a tree and he does, like, he takes, like, 240 damage, sometimes instead of saying taking uh, mortal damage, like, you'll say, like, oh, it took 240, uh, like, mortal damage or something like that. But, uh, if you have high enough guts, there's a small chance that you'll survive with, like, it'll just say you took 240 damage, but you'll survive with 1 HP. So, yeah, and the higher your guts, the higher ch uh, that chance is, basically. And then Vitality, that one's pretty simple. Um, this one just affects how much your HP will grow in the next level up. So right now we only have like two uh, Vitality with Paula, which is not very good. It means they're not going to get much um, HP. We have not gotten any Vitality at all, actually, because two is the base value. But, um, yeah, the... Um, now, not necessarily like the higher Vitality, the higher your HP grows. It's more like there's a correlation between how much vitality you have and how much HP you will have. So, like, if you have, like, around 11 vitality, you'll probably have, like, 166 HP. But at 2 vitality, you'd have, like, you know, 30 to 40 HP. But, yeah, if the vitality increases by, like, 2, you'll get, like, an extra bit of vitality. Like, I think one vitality correlates to, like, about 10 HP. But, of course... <clears throat> It's not necessarily true, like, look here, like, if it was 10 HP, then we'd only have, like, 110. That's because sometimes HP can go up without Vitality going up, and sometimes Vitality can increase it by, like, as much as 20 HP. So, it's not an exact correlation, but roughly one Vitality vitality would increase 10 HP. And the uh, same thing with IQ. IQ would roughly affect PP growth by about 5, so it's like 1... IQ for 5 PP, and that kind of seems to be the case with Paul right here. We have 4, so 4 times 5 is 20. We have 21, so it seems to kind of work out. Uh, Ness has only 12, so yeah, like 12 times 5 is 60, so it's like exactly the right amount. So yeah. Um, now, of course, it's not going to be exact, just like with Vitality, it can vary. Like right here, it's varied by 1. But yeah, typically, IQ will correspond to about 5 PP. So, yeah, if you have, like, 50 IQ, you'll have, like, 250 uh, PP. And then luck is kind of, um, it's kind of like a mystery stat, you know? Some say that it can affect, like, your chance of getting smash and surviving fatal blows, but I'm pretty sure that's only tied to guts. Lux has nothing to do with that. Um, I think it can affect, like, how often you land a hit. But I still don't know exactly what it does. The only thing I th I'm pretty sure it does is affect which uh which type of lucky sandwich you'll get. And I haven't explained it, but we were able to buy lucky sandwiches from the shop we were just at. And there are um I think there are five types of lucky sandwich. But they all have the same name. So luck will determine which one you'll get. There's one that only heals like um like a small amount of PP and or HP. Like, won't, sometimes you'll get only, like, I don't know, like, 20 HP or something like that, or 5 PP. But then there's, like, the best one, which will heal full HP and full PP. So, it's pretty good. But, yeah, I think um, I think luck is the determining factor for that. But I'm not exactly certain. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all the stats. So, there you go. Also said I would try to explain the psychic abilities that we just got. I got PK Flash in the last episode, but I did not explain what it does. I'll go ahead and explain it after I defeat this mole. And nice, we got a smash, so perfect. And talking kind of hurts a bit because yesterday I, I bit my tongue. And um, I was like chewing on some hard candy. And I accidentally bit my tongue right with the hard candy. So like the shards also stabbed into my tongue. And that really freaking hurt. So, like, double pain from my tooth and the freaking shards of the candy. Um, and my tongue is still sore right now. So when I'm talking, uh, moving my tongue kind of hurts a bit. But 
eh, whatever. I can deal with it. But yeah, it's like, I feel it right now. It's like, ugh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk too much. But it's kind of like the whole point of Let's Play, so I'm gonna talk. Anywho, um, dang, they're really taking out this teddy bear. All right, Paula's level seven. I love this. When we first get Paula, like she just levels up like every battle, which is super nice. Anyway, let's go ahead and explain the stats. So, we already know what PK Rackin does, but PK Flash gives you... A ra inflicts an enemy with one of these status effects here. It generates a strong flash that can make the enemy start crying uncontrollably, and in some circumstances, feel strange. So, very rarely will you get the feel strange, which is when um, an enemy will be confused and attack the wrong opponent. Sometimes even attacking itself, or one of its allies. Um, but crying uncontrollably is the most common one. And what that does is just lower the accuracy of the other attacks by a significant amount. Like, they'll miss way more often than they'll hit. But yeah, then a life up beta, it just heals 300 HP instead of 100, so it's pretty good. It'll basically will heal us. I mean, alpha is still enough right now, so we don't need to worry about beta. Shield, we already know what this does. It just takes physical damage and reduces it by 50%. But yeah, if you use a different shield, like if we use... Ness's shield right now, and then we use Paula's um, PSI shield, it'll cancel the normal shield. So yeah, it protects it. PSI shield just protects against um, PSI attacks, and unlike the shield, instead of doing only half damage, it takes away all damage. So um, you're basically immune to all PSI attacks. Even if it was like some crazy attack, like um, PK Starstorm Omega, like the strongest attack in the game. Or PK Rock and Omega, it's also considered the strongest attack in the game. They kind of do roughly the same amount of damage. Um, but yeah, like something crazy like that, PSI Shield will still like nullify all the damage. So that's really nice. Hypnosis, we already talked about. And Paralysis, it just forces an enemy into the numb condition. So basically, they won't be able to remove. Uh, they won't be able to attack at all. They can still do PSI attacks, but that's it. Um, yeah, and they it will not go away... For the rest of the battle unless they cure it with like uh healing gamma i think actually i don't think even beta can heal paralysis it needs to be gamma so yeah great charm okay that's good actually so we'll go ahead and give um actually i think it's fine if paula has the great charm because she needs the better defense right now so we'll give her the defense 34 Ooh. actually i don't think it changes much if anything <laughs> um does it only give like one more Defense? Let me see. Yeah, it's literally just one more defense. <laughs> oh well, I'll still give it to her. Uh, and we'll keep the travel charm on Ness. That way, Paula can kind of have a better chance of surviving. But yeah. Anyway. Okay, we gotta fight these guys again. But yeah, anyway, let's keep going fight here. We'll explain more. PSI. Um, what was I? Oh, yeah. So, I think that's all of it. You know, we just explained paralysis. It's really powerful. If you get inflicted with paralysis, it will still linger even after the battle. It will not cure itself after the battle. So, it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty critical condition to be in. But, yeah, anyway, next is PK Fire. It attacks enemies in the, in one row. So, you could, there's a back row and a front row in this game. PK Fire will just attack all enemies in one row, and it does about 80 points of damage, which is pretty good. So you can attack multiple enemies at once, but not all enemies. Freeze just does all about, yeah, 180 to one enemy, which is pretty effective, and it has a small chance to make them uh, solidify. In other words, they'll lose one turn, basically. May not be effective against some enemies, and yeah, that's one thing actually that's um, I should mention. There are elemental strengths and weaknesses in this game. So, um, some enemies are strong against fire, so even though you do, like, PK fire, they'll take, like, instead of 80 points of damage, they'll take only, like, 40. Some will take, like, only 6. Uh, but then there's others that'll take, like, 160 points of damage from PK fire. So it's pretty good. They'll be, like, weak against them. I think we'll actually find an enemy here that's weak against freeze, so that's nice. And that's about it for our PSI attacks right now. And there are certain items in the game that you could equip 
and it'll make you um, strong against certain elemental attacks, which is pretty neat. Um, they're called the pendants, and there's like the flame pendant and the uh, rain pendant. That will make you strong against fire or wa freeze attacks, respectively. So yeah, it's pretty neat. Anyway, let's keep going through here. Nice, level up again. And we got PK Thunder. PK Thunder is not an elemental attack. And fortunately, there are no enemies that could wield the Franklin Badge. So we don't have to worry about that. And, uh, oh nice, croissant. To make it even better, uh, I believe PK Thunder is one of the few PSI attacks that can actually go through shields. I don't know if it breaks shields, like if we um, use PK Thunder, it'll just get rid of the shield. But it'll for sure go through the shield and do damage. So it's really good. But there's a catch. The catch is that you cannot really um, target who you're going to attack. It attacks randomly and it has a very high chance of missing, which is can be pretty detrimental. But it's really a really good attack. It's pretty strong. And yeah, there's no like elemental strengths or weaknesses against it. So it'll pretty much always do the right amount of damage. Anyway, the Mighty Bear. You can do some PK rock in here because we need to get rid of all these guys. These guys are pretty dangerous. And I believe it's weak against these. So we're going to use Paula's PK freeze on that. And there we go. Paula went first this time. So I guess she is, uh, she's taking, she's getting a higher speed. Anyway, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, good. We defeated one of the moles playing rough. And thanks to that PK Freeze, uh, we managed to defeat the Mighty Bear. It's a really strong enemy. It'll do like, I don't know how much damage, but it'll one-shot Paula for sure. And that's not good. Okay, maximum HP, PP. Yeah, like, even though we leveled her up a lot, like, think about it. We're level um, 9 with Paula. But she's only got a maximum of 51 HP, which is pretty bad. Um, she still has a teddy bear, so if we get attacked by a big attack, it's possible that it'll still hit the teddy bear instead. Oh dang, I have to get that magic butterfly. Because we just did a big PSI attack. Uh, let's do PK fire on these guys. Okay, good, it attacked the teddy bear. But yeah, um... I don't know if they're yeah they're not weak to PK fire but it's still good because it does it does like 50 damage to both of them. Um, there we go. Got rid of him. Balls level 10. IQ luck maximum HP PP nice. So yeah, I also believe that Paula is the only character in the party. Oh, the only party member. Dang, I didn't think that mole would reach us. Uh, the only remember that will actually get more uh, PP than HP, so that's something to consider. But that's later on in the game. Like for now, she'll just have more HP than PP. But yeah, like at the end of the game, she'll have like 300 PP and like only no, she'll have like 200 something or maybe even 300 PP, but only like maybe 200 HP if you're lucky. But yeah, anywho, let's go ahead and get the magic butterfly. We might as well heal Paula. And I think Ness is... Oh no, I guess he could use one healing. Uh, but we only really have... Oh yeah, we have a bread bowl. We could use that. Uh, I think that heals like, what, 30? So that's perfect. So yeah. And when we get the magic butterfly, we recover some of our PP. I think... Yeah, like, Paula goes back to full, but Ness is still missing quite a bit. I don't know, maybe we could, like, try to summon another- Ooh, yep, there's a mighty bear. Forget it. Oh, dang, okay, I thought he was gonna chase us. Okay. Good, okay, the El the Mr. Baddies are not too bad. Because they- they start the battle. They pretty much always do, like, either a weak attack- Oh, wait, whoa. Oh, never mind, I thought he killed one of us, it was just the teddy bear that died. Still a bummer. But yeah, they only take like two hits to defeat, and uh, they always size up the situation. Or not always, but they do it very commonly. And that makes them feel strange, so they inflict themselves the negative status effect that makes it so they will probably miss their target. Wow, we already got PK Freeze Beta, that's crazy. 
But yeah, oh, dang, there is a ma another bat but magic butterfly, but I don't want to have to fight the mighty bears to get through it. Okay. You engage the mighty bear. Alright, this one we should be able to do pretty simply. We just need to do PK freeze. Hopefully it'll solidify. I think enemies that are weak against um, freeze can also solidify more often as well, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Don't don't quote me on that. Wow, okay, I'm surprised the bear didn't notice us. We got a pretty easy back attack right there. Uh, let's try this again. Now that I think about it, I guess the mighty bear probably isn't really weak to the, um, to PK Freeze. I guess it's just that PK Freeze naturally does a lot of damage, so that's pretty crazy. Ooh, PSI Caramel, that's really good. That'll heal 20 PP. It's one of the few PP recovery items in the game. So, yeah. I would probably use it right now. Actually, yeah, what, we have 62? Yeah, let's use it right now. Because we're about to fight a boss, and I'm going to need as much um, PSI as I can. And nice, we got 21, so we actually got rounded up a bit. So, yeah, just like with food items that recover HP, the PP recovery items don't always heal exactly like 20 PP or whatever it specifies. It'll do a range of like either less or more, but we ended up winning out on this one. We got a little bit more. But yeah, I think we're ready. Yeah, we're fully equipped. Let's go ahead and try this. Um, let's make sure we're at full health, though. Okay, yeah, we are. Alright, let's do this. You finally got here. This is the second to your sanctuary location. But it's mine now. Take it from me, if you dare. So here we are, we're fighting Mondo Mole. Pretty intimidating enemy. Not only does he do a lot of damage, but look, he's literally a giant mole with blood dripping from his claw in his mouth, so... Pretty violent image, considering that this is supposed to be like a kid's game. Anyway, I'm gonna start off doing shield, because... Yeah, I mean, you're gonna want to have some good defense. I'm gonna do PK Freeze Beta, like, right off the bat, because... We need to do a lot of damage. Oh, dang, he's strong against it, but at least we solidified him. So yeah, that's an example of an enemy that's strong against Freeze. It's not very good. Um, I th this guy is... I think he's susceptible to either Hypnosis or Paralysis. I'm gonna try Paralysis first. If he is susceptible to Paralysis, then this is gonna be super easy. But if he's not, then he'll do a ton of damage to us. Is he susceptible to Fire? Yeah! Okay, it is! Alright, so this is actually a piece of cake now. Because Mondo Mole has no PSI. So sick. Actually, I totally forgot about that until right now. Um, so yeah, we can just bash him now. Um, I remember not knowing about that until like my last playthrough. Because uh, I actually, my last playthrough, I, I utilized a really great resource for Earthbound knowledge. Starman.net. It's pretty much a collection of like all Earthbound knowledge that's been collected over the years. Uh, I also use like the Earthbound wiki and stuff like that. Oh, I guess he does have um, some PSI, but I don't think he has PSI attacks. He just has like offense up and defense up or something like that. But yeah, I remember it was saying like Mondo Molt is really weak against paralysis. So like, it's like a 99% chance or something. Or at least a very high percent, like more than 50% chance of getting inflicted with it. So actually, yeah, it's a cakewalk. I almost feel dumb about using my PSI Caramel now. Yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and beat the crap out of him. So yeah, like I mentioned before, Paralysis cannot heal naturally. It has to be healed with either going to the doctor or PSI Healing Gamma or a similar healing item. But yeah, there we go. That was actually really easy. I remember struggling a lot at, with this boss because he does a ton of damage, especially once he does his offense up. But yeah, there we go. I'm glad I made the right call. Anyway, Ness and Paula gained 2,896 experience. That's really good. That should level up. I guess it did not level up Ness. Never mind. But that's still really good. Speed went up by 1. Guts went up by 2. IQ went up by 3. HP went up by 1. PP went up by 13. There you go. And now she's level 13. Wow, she's like leveling up a lot. So there we go. I love when you can exploit a boss's weakness and make them easy. But yeah, let's go ahead and 
get the next um the next song for the eight melodies. Ness briefly had a vision of a baby in a red cap. Ness's soundstone recorded the melody of the lily footsteps. And here we are, got that nice music again, and of course going to the sanctuary full heals us, so that's good, we're back to full stats. Really nice. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get on out of here. Uh, I never, I haven't mentioned it yet, but yeah, this, uh, when I first played this game, the music that plays here actually kind of freaked me out a little bit. And not like, you know, oh, I'm too scared to play the game, obviously not, but I remember it was like, I found it very unsettling. Oh, shoot, wait, I forgot the Mighty Bear is strong against it. Okay, never mind, it's not. Alright, this should take him out, maybe. No, okay, never mind. Alright, please die. There we go. But uh, I actually did not hear this song first in the sanctuary because my first playthrough, I had no idea where the sanctuaries were. So outside of on it, uh, on its giant step, and then like a second sanctuary that we get like later on, um, I had a, like no idea. I had to eventually backtrack pretty much right at the end of the game and get all the sanctuaries. So I actually heard this music in a different location, but I remember being like freaked out by it. It's like this is really unsettling. Like take a listen. Like, sounds like somebody would probably hear more in a horror game than freaking, you know, Earthbound. Oh my god, there are two moles in one spot. I didn't know that. Nice. Alright, well, more experience. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to, you know, take the experience out from these guys. And there we go. Wow, we really took these guys out easily. Alright. And now Ness is level 22. I think that's good enough, right? Ooh, PK Rock and Beta. Nice. Alright, I'm gonna try to fight, yeah, we'll, like, we'll do like one more fight against like a Mighty Bear and some other enemies. Seeing as we can get like guaranteed back attacks, um, might as well. Oh wait, maybe it was not a good idea for me to not do a uh, PK freeze real quick. There we go. Fast forward. And you know what, screw it, let's, let's fight, let's fight, yeah, we'll fight this Mighty Bear. Let's just do PK Rock and Gamma, or Beta rather, just to see how it looks like. Alright, and we'll do PK Freeze because why not? Alright, 116 and PK Rock and Beta. Pretty cool. And does 162, nice. Mighty Bear became tame. So actually, I don't remember what the value like averages out to. Let's go ahead and check the description. So it costs 14, and it does about 180, so that's pretty good, actually. We got the weaker end of that, I guess. But yeah, let's go ahead and just full heal again real quick. So, yeah, fast forward. There we go, now we're back to full. And because I don't feel like walking back, let's go ahead and just use the, uh, the exit mouse. The mouse found the way out and wait for you to follow. So yeah, we just warp right to the entrance, so we just instantly can leave. Really nice. So yeah, alright, that should do it. Um, we're almost at half an hour, so I would say... Um, and yeah, there's only one seat, you can't ride the bike now. But yeah, I'd say we could end the video here, so let's go ahead and do that. I would say doing one sanctuary is good enough. And yeah, alright, let's go ahead and uh, save. See, I wanted to mention that uh, I actually have been keeping up with editing these videos. I, I should say that lightly, because as you obviously can see, there's like barely any editing i mean what there's like a fade in and then a fade out like whoa so crazy i know but um i mean before i used to slack on that really hard but yeah like i've already completed um uh like processed parts one through five already all i have to do is really just, just like, make a thumbnail i have not really decided what those thumbnails will be yet Although I guess it's kind of a moot point. By the time you guys will see this video, I would have already decided. 
But, um... Yeah, uh, I think it's good that I'm kind of getting these done on time. But, uh, yeah, um, I'm thinking, like, if I should just have the, you know, a basic title screen or something, I might stick with that because I'm not even really sure what I could put in the thumbnail. I'm like with, like, Wind Waker Randomized or something like that, or, like, a 3D game. There's no dynamic camera, and I feel like it would be pretty boring if I just took a screenshot of the game and then put, like, part five in the corner or something like that. I feel like that'd be kind of lame. Although, I feel like it'd also be kind of lame if I just put, like, the Earthbound title screen and then put, like, part one. But, I might have to do that because, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't, like, manipulate the camera here because there is no camera. It's a sprite-based game. So, I'm not even sure, really, how I could do that. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll have nice thumbnails, maybe I won't, but... I'll worry about that later, and by this point, you guys would have already seen it anyway, so it's a moot point. But yeah, anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.